Who are the people of the Most High? Israelites. All praise is due to Yahweh by Shimei Awashai, double honors to our elders at GMS. Shalom to all the brothers all around the earth, all right? Now, today's topic, we're going to do the Willie Lynch letter, okay? It's called The Making of a Slave. We're not going to read all of it. It says, this speech was said to have been delivered by Willie Lynch on the bank of the James River in the colony of Virginia in 1712. Okay, Lynch was a British slave owner in the West Indies. Okay, he was invited to the colony to the colony of Virginia in 1712 to teach his methods to slave owners there. I'm not going to read all of this, but I'm going to jump down. It says, "Gentlemen, you know what your problems are. I do not need to elaborate. I'm not here to un to enumerate your problems. I'm here to introduce you to a method of solving them. In my bag here, I have a foolproof method." for controlling your black slaves. I guarantee every one of you that if installed correctly, it will control the slaves for at least 300 years. Now, I think we're around that time period right now, 300 years since, all right? It says, my, my method is simple. Any member of your family or your overseer can use it. I have outlined a number of differences among the slaves, and I take these differences and make them bigger. I use fear, distrust, and envy for control purposes. Okay, it says, these methods have worked on my modest plantation in the West Indies. That's where the tribe of Benjamin is located at, okay? It says, West Indies, it says, and it will work throughout the South. Take this example, take this sample, little list of differences and think about them. On top of my list is age, but it's there only because it starts with an A. The second is color or shade. There is intelligence, size, sex, sizes of plantations, status on plantations, attitude. Okay, it says, uh, I shall give you an outline of action, but before that I shall assure you that distrust is stronger than trust and envy stronger than adulation. Okay, get that scripture where it says, and his eyes should be evil to his brother. Deuteronomy 28. What is that, about 40, what about maybe 32? While you look for it, I'm going to just read it. It says, I shall assure you that distrust is stronger than any, that distrust is stronger and envy stronger than adulation, respect, or admiration. The black slaves, after receiving this indoctrination, shall carry on and will become self-refueling. Okay, and self-generating for hundreds of years, meaning that the stupidity that these niggas mind state are in is going to keep on passing down. Do you got it? Yeah, I believe it. I started at um, 32. Okay. All right, Deuteronomy 28 and 32. Thy sons and thy daughters should be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And that happened during slavery, okay? That happened during the slave trade, all right? We're reading it out of the Bible. This is prophesied, all right? And there should be no might in thy hand. The fruit of thy land and all thy labor shall nation which thou knowest not eat up, mm -hmm. and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. Yeah, and that's what these Edomites have done to us. Their contemporary name is, just, is Caucasians, all right? You're not Caucasian. You are known as, your biblical name is Esau Edom. You are the descendants of, the, of Esau, okay? Jacob's evil brother, all right? That's who your descendants are. You don't come out of Jacob. It says, black slaves, after hundreds of years, maybe thousands, don't forget, you must pitch the old black male versus the young black male, and the young black male against the old black male. If you can't find it, just give me the 43rd verse on down, okay? It says, you must use the dark-skinned slaves versus the light-skinned slaves, and the light-skinned slaves versus the dark-skinned slaves. You must use the female versus the male, and the, f and the male versus the female. You must also have white servants and overseers who distrust all blacks, but it is not necessary that your slaves trust and depend on us. They must love, respect, and trust only us. Okay. All right, Deuteronomy 28 and 43. The stranger that is within thee should get up above thee very high. And that stranger is talking about Esau, the nation of Edom. 
Look at they are very hard. They're ruling over us. They've been ruling over us for the last 500 some odd years. And thou shall come down very low. And we all come down very low. Ghettos. Look, just look at world star hip hop, man. That's a low level of life, man. He should lend to thee, and thou should not lend to him. Mm -hmm. He should be the head, and thou should be the tail. Right. Yeah, lend to us. Where do we go? Where do you go to get a bank loan? You got to go to the so-called white man. You don't own your own banks. You don't lend to him. You don't lend nothing to the so-called white man. The only thing you might give to him is your talents when you playing NBA basketball or NFL football, and even at the end of your at the end of your tenure is up, your knees is all messed up. Your back is all messed up. Your ankles is all messed up. And if you're playing football, you got head traumas from all those hits. And you musicians and you actors and actresses out there, you give up your ass. Literally. You become sodomites and Gomorites. Verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee. So no matter wherever the nation of Israel go, no matter you blacks and Hispanics go, these curses are pursuing you. All right, like a like a private investigator's hunting, or like a bounty hunter, more better, a bounty hunter who who, who hunts a fugitive, and he's tracking him down. He might he might be in America. He might have to take a trip to South America, but he's going to follow that guy. He's going to follow that fugitive until he gets him. That's the same equivalent of these curses following you. No matter where you go in America, oh, you think you want to go to Europe? Guess what? You're going to follow. The curse is going to follow you there. You want to go to Japan and anywhere in Asia, the curse is going to follow you there. Go ahead, brother. And she'll pursue thee and overtake thee. Beautiful. Now, that competing with the other guys over there? Okay, anyway, it says, it says, uh, cardinal principles for making, a, for making a Negro. It says, it says, for fear that our future generations may not understand the principles of breaking both the beast together, the nigger and the horse. So Esau is comparing us to horses. Yeah. It says, we understand that short-range planning economics result in peri peri periodic economic chaos. So, to, so that to avoid turmoil in the economy, it requires us to have breadth and depth in long-range comprehensive planning. Particular, don't it say it seeks, woe to him that seeks deep dye this council. Yep. All right, so this man, what, what another scripture says, he doesn't go to sleep until he, uh, what is it, execute his wickedness. Okay, it says, both horse, let me read this now, right? It says, both horse and niggers, said both horse and niggers are no good to the economy in the wild or natural state. Both must be broken and tied together for orderly reproduction, for orderly production, for orderly future, special and particular attention must be paid to the female and the youngest offspring. Okay, give me um John ten and ten, please. All right. This is John ten and ten. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am mm -hmm. come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. And the thief is talking about who you know today, contemporarily, as the so-called white man, whose biblical name is Esau, Edom. Okay? Let me just read a little bit more. It says, oh, perfect. this is something, this is a fair tactic that the Esau uses. Okay, it says, take the meanest and most relentless nigger, strip him of his clothes in front of the remaining male niggers, the female and the nigger infant, tar and feather him, tie each leg to a different horse face in opposite directions set him afire and beat both horses to pull him apart in front of the remaining niggers the next step is to take a bull whip and beat the remaining nigger males to to the point of death in front of the female and the infant don't kill him but put the fear of god in him for he can be useful for future breeding. Give me Isaiah 51 and 20. Now you want to know why the scripture says, my sons has fainted. All right, Isaiah 51 and 20. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the streets. The sons of the Heavenly Father, you so-called Negroes, West Indian, and Puerto Ricans, scattered throughout North, Central, South America, and different parts of the world. Okay? Say so it's, it's fainted. What is that? Just look at Jake, man. They fainted, man. They sitting on the street corners all day. Narcotics and uh, over overindulgence in alcohol, 
just simplicity, wickedness, chasing after another man's woman, all type of stupid shit. Go ahead. As a wild bull in the net, mm -hmm. they are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of thy God. That's why these niggas and spicks are acting that way. The rebuke of the Heavenly Father, okay? That's, this is our punishment sentence. I got something. It's um, Isaiah 42 and 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. Mm -hmm. They are all of them snared in hoes. They are hid in prison houses. And, and a lot of you niggas are hid in what? Jail cells. You're, pris you're in prison all the time. All right? And, and man, I was watching that movie American X. No, American History X. Man, they, and you niggas in there, man, you be raping each other and shit. Man, this place got to be destroyed, man. This place has to actually be, be destroyed. They are, they, they are all hid in prison houses. Mm -hmm. They are for a prey and none delivereth, for a spoil and none save restore. Beautiful. Now, it says, the breaking process of the black woman, okay? It says, take the female and run a series of tests on her to see if she will submit to your desires willingly. Test her in every way because she is the most important factor for good economics. If she shows any sign of resistance in submitting completely to your will, do not hesitate to use a bullwhip on her to exact, to exact that last bit of bullshit out of her. Take care not to kill her, for in doing so, you spoil good economics. Okay, it says, go down, it says, the male, it says, we reverse nature by turning and pulling a civil, a civilized nigga apart and bull whipping the other to the point of death, all in her presence. By her being left alone, unprotected, with the male image destroyed, the, or, the, the ordeal caused her to move from her psychologically dependent state to a frozen independent state. And this frozen psychological state of independence, she will raise her male and female offspring in reverse roles. For fear of the young male's life, she will psychologically train him to be mentally weak, despite and mentally weak and dependent, but physically strong. These big ox niggas, man. Yeah. You big Kimbo Slice looking motherfuckers, all right? Because she has become psychologically, get Jeremiah 30 and 22, hold that on deck. It says, for fear of the young male's life, she will psychologically train him to be mentally weak and dependent. Okay, it says, but physically strong, because she has become psychologically independent, she will train her female offsprings to be psychologically independent. What have you got? You've got the nigger woman. I thought only GMS uses that word. This is a fucking 400 year old document, goddammit. Let me read this shit again. It said, what have you got? You've got the nigger woman out front and the nigger man behind and scared. This is a perfect situation of sound sleep and economics. Read that for me, brother. All right, Jeremiah 30, verse 22. And ye should be my people, and I will be your God. Be behold, the whirlwind of the Lord That's goes... Jeremiah 30, and 22. 22? Yeah. 22? Hold on a second. Where it says, behold, I shall make a new thing, a woman shall compass that of a man. It was a 31 and 22. 22. Bear with us for a second. Yeah, here we go. Okay. I'm sorry, that's my fault. Um, Jeremiah 31 and 22. Uh, how long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord had created a new thing in the earth. Mm -hmm. A woman should compass a man. And that's what we've been li that's what we living in. If you watch that uh, documentary on CNN the 70s. I, I couldn't, I had to turn the channel the other day. It talks about that woman liberation. And who was the, who was the start of it? The so-called white woman that you nigga women be following to a goddamn T. And fuck these cracker bitches, man. You nigga women be following these cracker bitches. Every time you see a cracker bitch do something, oh, I see white people doing this. I, whatever occur to you that what they doing is off? No, it don't occur to you. Only thing you give a fuck about are your goddamn benefits and your, uh, and your treats that you get for sucking off the so-called white man. All right, it says the Negro marriage. It says, we, bred two, we breed two nigger males with two nigger females. Then we take the nigger male away from 
them and keep them moving and working. Say one nigga female bears a nigga, a nigga female, and the other bears a nigga male. Both nigga females being without influence of the nigga male image, frozen with a independent psycholo psychology, will raise their offspring into reverse positions. The one with the female offspring will teach her to be like herself, independent and negotiable. It says, the one with the nigga male offspring, she being frozen, subconscious fear for his life, will raise him to be mentally dependent and weak, but physically strong. In other words, body over mind, which is supposed to be the other way around, okay? Now, in a few years, when these two offsprings become fertile for early reproduction, we will mate and breed them and continue the cycle. That is good, sound and long-range comprehensive planning. You got something? Uh, no, I don't got it. Just read this last excerpt. I found a verse, though. I should be evil. There's um, Deuteronomy 28, verse uh, 54. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes should be evil toward his brother. What does that mean? Being brotherly. When you're being tender and delicate, meaning you're being brotherly. You have compassion. What's the opposite of being that? Straight up being a goddamn fucking nigger. And niggerisms. And murderous. And, and adulterous. You want to sleep with the man's woman. You want to kill the man. Meanwhile, he in the same fucking struggle as you, man. To the elect out there that's running around doing all this shit, man, wake up, man. We need y'all to wake up, man. We got to get the fuck out of here, man. We understand it's through the spirit, man, but we can't hasten in this day fast enough, man. And toward the wife of his bosom, and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. The scriptures say that the so-called black man will leave the children. Where the fuck you nigga bitches got out, come out your mouth talking this shit, talk about a good man is hard to find. You're under the curses. First of all, you ain't a good woman. So how the hell are you gonna find a good man? You sucking guys off. When you get pregnant, you go to the uh, Planned Parenthood, or you take them constant sets of pills. So if you if you a terrible rotten woman, how the hell are you gonna find a decent loving man? That's a that's a that's laughable. But back to this, this last excerpt says controlled language for you Israelite groups out there that says the Hebrew don't matter. Well, let's read this last little excerpt right here. It says, crossbreeding completed for future severance from their original be from their original beginning, we must completely annihilate the mother tongue. Are you serious? What's that mother tongue? Hebrew. And you get these other camps out here talking about y'all make Hebrew a doctrine. It's important to know the Hebrew. How the hell are you going to send a prayer to the Heavenly Father, man? Prayers in Hebrew, man, are powerful, man. See, this is deliberate sabotage, man, from the so-called white man. We're reading it right here. It says, Totally annihilate the mother tongue of both the new nigger and the new mule and institute a new language that involves new life's work of both. You, you know language is a particular institution. Get, uh, hold uh, Isaiah 29 and 16. All right, it says, for example, if you take a slave, if you teach him all about your language, he will know all your secrets. Why do you think they ain't, they ain't allowed Jake to read? One, if they would have been able to read the scriptures, they would have realized that the prophecy in Deuteronomy 28 fit them. Okay? It says... For example, if you take a slave, if you teach him about all about your language, he will know all your secrets. And he is then no more a slave, for you can't fool him any longer. And being a fool is one of the basic ingredients of any accident, any incidents to, mate, to the maintenance of the slavery system. Being a fool. So why, now you see why they got all these niggerish stupidity shit on BET. All the buffoonery. Being a fool. Every show you see on television is a bunch of fucking foolish, foolishness and stupidity. All right. I'm going to read this last excerpt here. It says, additional note, Henry Hentley ba Berry, speaking in the Virginia House of Delegates in 1833, described the situation as it exists in many parts of the South at that time. We have, as far as possible, closed every avenue by which light may enter in. May, light may enter therein. What means what? They, they, they hide the truth. They distort the truth. I'm going to read it again. It says, we have, 
as far as possible close every avenue which every avenue by which light may enter their minds okay if we could extinguish the capacity to see the light our work would be complete in other words get rid of the truth it says they would then be on a level with the beasts of the field and should be and we should be safe i am not certain that we would not do it if we could find out the process and that of the plea of necessity. Go ahead, finish with this. Uh, Isaiah 29, verse 16. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. So we're on the bottom right now. Trading places is the best movie. You're gonna, you're, <laughs> you Edomites, you're the Dan Aykroyd, you're the Dan Aykroyd uh, character in that movie. And you're gonna be, you're gonna be really, you're gonna be hanging low. You're going to be really effed up, man. You're going to be poor as shit. Get used to it. So live it up. Because in the kingdom, you ain't getting shit. For should the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Mm -hmm. Or should the thing frame say of him that framed it, he have no understanding? Right. So the heavenly father made Esau, the so-called white man, to be the wicked, and Jake to build, play the righteous. And right now we're in our captivity and our punishment. But that captivity is about to end. And with that, I say death to America, and I say uh, shalom, please, you know, shalom, double honors to our elders, and you know, shalom to the brethren, shalom.